Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at one of the um, stock valuation model that we'll be um, studying. Uh, the model we're going to look at today is called the dividend space valuation model. Remember the going concern assumption. It means that we assume a company will continue with no end date, so it will it'll literally last forever. So if we are estimating the value of a stock using dividend as the cash flow, um, so dividend in year, at the end of year T and RE is the cost of um, equity. So it's basically computing the present value. And because it will last forever, this summation doesn't end. This is an infinity symbol. So you'll just keep going and going and going. So what do uh, we have a very expensive definition of dividend. So we uh, remember that our goal is to capture all the cash flows that will ret be returned to shareholders. So that will include cash dividends, stock repurchase in the case of company going out of business, liquidating dividend. So we, we can also, um, in addition to using just cash dividend, we can look at comprehensive income versus changes in book value. So if book value increase, that means uh, investors or shareholders are putting money into the firm, right? So there will be new additional paying capital. Um, so that will be subtracted from uh, comprehensive income, which in the long run, in the very, very long run, we assume that um, the company will pay all this out as dividend. In the short run, you include cash dividends and stock repurchase. Now, this is a very general framework. And remember, uh, very important is that stock valuation is much more of an act than a science. So this is an overall framework. To actually apply this, we have to make some um, assumptions. So first of all, we have to choose a forecasting horizon. It can be three years, it can be five years. So let's say T is the number of years that you can reliably, reliably uh, forecast dividends. So that's the key. Um, if I ask you to uh, forecast for 20 years, um, you think back 20 years ago versus today, so much have changed. It's virtually impossible to forecast for a long horizon. Um, at best, you can do a three-year or a five-year forecast. Beyond that horizon, beyond that forecasting horizon, we're going to capture all future dividends into a continuing value. Um, what we do is we assume that all these future dividends beyond the forecasting horizon will grow in a, at a constant rate. So we can use the growing perpetuity um, formula to help us capture those continuing value. So the continuing value can be captured using this um, constant growth, a constant growth um, perpetuity uh, formula. So this is a dividend in year T plus one is the estimated dividend at the end of year T plus one. And we can estimate that using the growth rate so once we remember, we can forecast dividend out to year T. So we will be able to forecast this, uh, this value, dividend at the end of year T. And we assume that um, you will increase at this constant growth rate. So remember, this growth rate will last forever. And our year, of course, is the cost of equity. So the value of the stock in year zero now becomes the sum of the present value to so this is a discounted um, dividend from year one to year T, which is the forecast horizon, plus the continuing value. Again, we have to discount that back to year zero. So, so instead of using the summation, you can see the um, the, if we expand this out, this means we are discounting the dividend from year one back one year, year two back two years, year three up to the end of the forecasting horizon. And then we take the continuing value. Um, so this is expanding all these terms. In 
instead of assuming the constant growth rate applying directly to the dividend in year, in, at, in year T, we can also assume that the constant growth rate applies to both comprehensive income and book value of equity. So again, remember, this is an assumption that things would just go um, at a constant rate forever. So if that, that's the case, then you can take the last year's forecast horizon comprehensive income and the book value, again, at the end, uh, at year T, the end of the forecasting horizon. So there's two ways you can estimate um, the dividend for computing the continuing value. Once you take dividend in year T times one plus the growth rate, or you can take the comprehensive income times one plus the growth rate minus the uh, book value times the growth rate. Either approach will work. Which one is better depends on the firm, depends on how reliable you think the dividend that you estimated is, uh, whether or not comprehensive income and book value is a better estimate. There's no right or wrong answer in stock valuation. This is all an act. The right or wrong is using the correct information or the best information you have available. There are some adjustments that we may need to make. So one is called a mid-year adjustment. Dividends are usually paid quarterly, not at the end of the year. Stock repurchase happens throughout the year. What, so to precisely incorporate the timing of these cash flows can be very tricky. So instead of trying to capture the precise timing, we make a generalized assumption that all the cash flows occur in the middle of the year. So what we do is we use, we create an adjustment factor. This is equal to one plus the cost of equity divided by two. And your adjusted value is you take the value we estimated times this adjustment factor. Let's put all this into practice in an example. So let's say this is um, Shell Company. So pause the video now and let's put all this information into um, Excel. Are we ready? The first thing we're going to do is to estimate the cost of equity. And we have the beta of the stock and the risk-free rate and the market risk premium. So we can use the capital asset pricing model. We've done this quite a few times now. Once again, if you don't have the formula memorized, make sure you have it handy and easily accessible. So our cost of equity is 7.05%. Next, we're gonna take a look at the analyst forecast. So this is something that you either you come up with on your own or you rely on an analyst. So let's say the analyst assume that the projected long-term constant growth rate after year plus five is going to be 3%. In addition to that, the analyst is going to project dividend growth from year plus one through year plus five. So here are some tricks in Excel that will make your life a lot easier. Uh, in fact, you can use, if you put your cursor uh, on the corner so it becomes a small cross, you can expand this. And you'll automatically expand that for you. So let's assume that it's going to be 5%. This is just our starting assumption. So based on this growth rate, we can project our future 
dividend. So year one is simply year zero dividend times one plus the year, year one growth rate. And then year two is going to be year one growth rate times one plus year two growth rate. And we can copy this to year three, four, and five. So notice that I did not run any of these calculations. So if you are using your calculator, it won't match. So now we have projected future dividends. So our forecasting horizon is five years. So what that means is we also need to project our continuing value at year five. So we know that the continuing value is equal to um, the dividend. We're going to use the dividend to help us. So, but this is going to increase at the long-term growth rate and divide that by the cost of equity minus the long-term growth rate. So this is our projected continue, continuing value. So our total projected future cash flow is the sum of the two. So is the dividends for year one through year five, and also uh, in the last year in year five is year five dividend plus the continuing value. Once we have the projected future cash flow, we can compute the present value of future, all the future cash flows. And we've done this several times already, so this should be easy. We're going to once again use the MPV function. The discount rate this time is the cost of equity. And the value is the total value. This is very important. You cannot add this at the end. You cannot put this as year six because this is year five. So you have to add these two first before you can use the MPV function. So setting up your model correctly is very important. So this is our projected future uh, present value. And we can add in our mid-year adjustment. Remember, the median adjustment is 1 plus the cost of equity divided by 2. Once again, if you don't have the formulas memorized, write it down so that you can create your model without having to memorize all the formulas. And then the value of the stock today, so today is year 0, is the present value of total cash flow times the mid-year adjustment. So this is the total value, let me emphasize. So total value of equity. So the value per share is equal to the value you estimated divided by the number of shares outstanding. So we, this is how you can use the dividend-based model to estimate the value of a stock. Obviously, estimation is often subject to error, and there are a lot of uncertainty. And therefore, it's very important after you created our model, check that our model is correct, we do sensitivity analysis uh, on our forecast. When you do a sensitivity analysis, we want to choose variables that have the greatest impact on our valuation. Uh, some useful candidates are market risk premium, the beta of the stock, the long-term growth rate. All these are variables you can use. Um, you can use a function in Excel called data table to help you do the sensitivity analysis. So let's take a look at our example and see how we can do that. It's a good idea to set up your data table away from your model. So I'm going to 
do the sensitivity analysis over here. So the variable I want to uh, analyze is the value of the stock. So I'm going to put that in the corner here. On the vertical side, I'm going to use the two variables I'm going to choose is the long-term growth rate. Currently, the long-term growth rate is 3%. And I want to look at potential of anywhere from half a percent to say 6%. So this is the long-term growth rate. And then over here, I can look at the market risk premium. And currently, the market risk premium is 5%. And we want to see what happens if market risk premium may be from 2% All the way to eight percent. So once again, here is the market risk premium. So this is our sensitivity analysis, the corner here. And this is important. So we are doing the sensitivity analysis on value per share. So this is the cell that we put in. So use the formula. So equal to the value per share that we computed. So this is how we will set up the sensitivity analysis table. To perform the analysis, we highlight the entire table area. Go to data. and under what if analysis, you can choose data table. And you, you can choose row input cell. So this is our row input cell. Our row input cell is market risk premium. So let's go back to our model. Market risk premium is located here. So market risk premium is located in cell B7. Column input, remember column input is the long-term growth rate. Long-term growth rate is located in cell B15. Once I press OK, then the table will be automatically compute, uh, completed. So you can see the impact of different long-term growth rate and also market risk premium on the per value share. Notice something very strange here. We got negative number here. And the reason is because at this area, the long-term growth rate is greater than the cost of capital. And when that happened, the, the model does not work. So you cannot grow faster than the market. That's not possible. At most, you'll become the market. So you can see uh, the lower the growth rate, the lower the stock price, um, the lower the market premium, the higher the stock price. So it, it, it uh, is inversely related to the required return and is positively related to the growth rate. This concludes our discussion on this chapter. I'll see you again soon.